Hey guys, it's Courtney here from SUV Campers and today I'm going to be answering one of the most common questions we get asked, which is why should you buy from SUV? Now I've actually teamed up with one of the other SUV dealers here in Queensland and we're going to be answering this question in this video. The first thing I want to show you though is how quickly these camper trailers open and to do that I'm going to throw over to Joe. Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to quickly, simply open a, a Ford Fall camper trailer. It's as easy as this, guys. So what you do is you come to the front, you disengage your winch, you can have that in the neutral position, and then basically you walk around to the back of your camper trailer. You've got four catches on your camper trailer. You've got two at the back and two on each side, one on each side. So basically all you do is release the corner catch on each side first. They're your safety ones. And then basically I'll put my elbow on the corner of the camper and I'll release the first camp latch on this side here. All I'm doing is just holding a bit of weight down here to let the latch take a bit of weight off the latch. And then I'll come to this side here, I'll do the same, I'll put my elbow on the corner, I'll just take the weight off the latch, lift that off and just let the camper lid go. By doing that it just makes the lid go up a lot easier. Now I'll then come to the front. All you do is just you can basically two fingers just wind that lid straight over. It'll just wind over as easy as that. So as quick as you wind it, as quick as it'll open up, it doesn't get any easier than this. Now wind it all the way down. As I get to the end there, I'll just engage the, the ratchet. That'll hold the lid down. I'll then come around to the side of the camper. On, depending on the model, you've just got some latches on the side here that just locks it in place so it doesn't flip back up. Uh, I'll go to the corner of the camper. The canvas has got these nice little pieces that come around like that and just locks that whole corner in really nice and neat. I'll then come over, I'll open the main entry door, I'll come inside. It's as simple as basically going inside here, pushing the back bow up. It automatically locks into place and that's as easy as it is guys. There's your camper trailer. Alright guys, I'm going to throw over to Jeff now. He's going to show you how quickly and easily the Grand Mega closes. So, take it away Jeff. Today I'm just going to show you how easy it is to pull down a four berth camper trailer. This particular model is a Grand, so if you have a different four berth camper trailer, it may have some slight variance, but the principle is exactly the same. So, open the door, walk into your camper trailer, simply let it off the locking pin, on both sides. Very important to make sure from now that you close your door and flick your deadlock across from the inside so the door is closed. Then it's a matter of letting the winch cable off the front, releasing your lid and then with the twin struts it goes over very simple. Now when you get to here, the first lot of canvas it certainly makes it a lot more simple to put it in. And all I do is fold this canvas so it goes layer up on layer. It'll fold up a lot better. And it's exactly the same around the other side. So the first lot of canvas just goes in across the top of the bed so there's heaps of spare room in there. When you get to here, some people either have a horse lead or a dog lead rope hanging down and they just pull down on, on that to close the camper trailer. All I do is grab the side, pull this down. By having that front window open, it expresses the air out of the back. And then all you need to do is winch cable onto that bottom eyelet and then the winch pulls the rest down. So when you're winding this down, very simple on the winch. The first place I stop to do a tuck in is when the winch cable itself hits these middle ribs and that's where you do your first tuck in from. So push it all over towards the centre. And the same around this side. Then just down on your winch cable again until the winch cable is hitting this front rib of the camper trailer and that's where you do your final tuck in of all your canvas.
Once you've got all the canvas inside, you can either winch it down a little bit more from the front or just pull it down until you have you get your over centre latch on here. Use that as a lever to put the back one on and simply pull down both the levers at the same time. Same on the other side and that's it. Now the reason SUV campers are so quick and so easy to open is because of these double gas struts here. So this assists with the opening and closing of the camper trailer. Alrighty, now the lid of SUV campers actually has a double rubber automotive seal around it. So you can see one seal there and then a second one at the back here. Now the reason we put two seals on is actually as an added method of dust and water protection. So when you're traveling along, the camper's bouncing around, you're four wheel driving, it might be flexing a little bit, one of the seals may lift and this is where the other seal will come into play. So if one of the seals lifts, you've still got a backup seal there to stop any dust and water from getting inside the camper. Now the tropical roof on SUV campers is that little bit that you can see above the main roof of the camper there. It's made out of the same canvas as the trailer itself. So it's a 16 ounce canvas and there's no need to manually extend that pole. So the tropical roof just opens and closes with the camper trailer as normal. There's nothing more you need to do. Now all the external doors on SUV campers are flush mounted for improved weatherproofing. So that means that when it rains, 90% of the water is just going to run straight off of the side of the camper and the rubber seals inside only have to catch that 10%. Now getting into the camper has never been easier with this Australian design swing door and steps separate. Now other companies what they do is they actually bolt the steps to the back of the door meaning that when you go to get in and out of your camper trailer you're actually walking up and down the door itself. With ours though it's just like a regular door you walk up to it open it like so and walk up the steps to get inside. Now the other good thing about the Australian design swing door is of a night time when you go to bed you can literally just close the door and there's a deadbolt inside meaning you can lock it as well. Now along the actual drawbar you've got three separate storage compartments. This first one is an aluminium gas storage box. So that opens up like that and you can store two four and a half kilo gas bottles on the inside which you can see just there. Now in the middle here you have an aluminium storage box that can be used for storing pretty well anything. Now to open it all you do is you undo your over center lock here like so and then just fold the lid back like that. Now you can actually see the ceiling around this one is an elaborate seal. That is probably one of the most waterproof seals that you can get for storage boxes and stuff like that. Now you can see how much room's inside. We've got all the three side walls, the draft skirt, the floor and the touring awning for, the, for this camper inside here. So it shows you how much room there is. Then to close it all you do Fold that back over like that and redo up your over center catches. And over this side you've got space for two jerry cans. So just your standard 20 litre jerry cans. Now SUV campers come with two water tanks. So you've got one underneath the camper here. That's 100 litres. It's also your main tank. So when you have a shower or you are washing your dishes, this is where the water is going to come from. Now your second water tank is actually located behind your spare tires. So this back water tank is actually a ball weight adjuster. So when it's full, it's going to take weight off of the tow ball. Alrighty guys, so I'm gonna throw back over to Joe. He's going to explain a little bit more about the suspension on the camper trailers. Off you go, Joe. Just wanna quickly go through guys and show you independent suspension on an SUV camper, how it's assembled and what goes into assembling an SUV camper. Uh, underneath, this is really important for, for the guys that wanna get out in the bush and want to make it there and back without having any trouble. Um, we sort of take it to the next level, we think, when it comes to putting a suspension in the camper trail and making sure it's going to stay in there. Um, with the new suspension arms we've got out at the present time, the Series 4 suspension arms, we've got Series 3, Series 2 and the original suspension arms out there, all going gangbusters. This one here in particular is a Series 4. You can see it's all been reinforced along the sides of the suspension arms. These are all 6mm thick suspension arm box section around here. They're all 6mm wall thickness. You've got 16mm wall thickness steel, steel collar tubes on the end here. And then your nylon bushes go, your nylon 6 bushes go inside that again with a crush tube. So from here, once that suspension arm's actually fitted in your camper trailer like this with your coil and your shockies, everything, all your bolts, nuts are always locked tight in here. We don't leave anything to chance, so we make sure everything's locked tight on it if it's getting bolted together. 
From here you've got your complete hub and stub assembly, which is this. That's your bolt-on stub that's actually fitted inside your hub and your brake assembly. Every camper trailer, the SUV camper trailer puts out at the present time has the option to carry a spare stub, uh, and which is one of these. This can be carried uh, on your camper trailer. We've actually got a space on every trailer now that you can actually bolt this on with a spare set of bolts. So if you ever did get into trouble and something drastically went wrong, you hit a culvert or you hit a cliff or whatever, um, and you did do some damage to your suspension, one of the main key points that you don't want happening is your stub breaking off here, which I've, I've never seen one of these break off, but it can possibly happen, uh, or you damage this thread. So once you damage that thread, if you're in the middle of the sticks and you have got nothing to fix that, um, this is where your spare stub comes into handy. So you've got the ability to carry one of these on board if you're going up to the top where there's no services available uh, to get yourself out of trouble. Uh, it's definitely a good piece of gear to have on board. Uh, but you can see with the amount of work we put into our camper trailers and, and what we do here, we don't take chances with this sort of gear. Uh, once they bolt that stub onto there, uh, it's wheel aligned. But again, everything's Loctited. Uh, your wheel nuts are torqued to the right correct pressure to pull the trailer. Uh, and basically from there, you're ready to go. But um, with SUV campers, we don't leave it the chance. That was awesome. Thanks so much, Joe. Now, SUV campers pride themselves on using what's called a true tear weight system. Now, that means that when we take our camper trailers over the way bridge, we make sure that the mattresses are in them, the couches, all the annexes, walls, uh, poles, everything like that is in it. So we can give you the most accurate tear weight possible. Alrighty guys, now this is your pantry. Before I get into the storage though, I just wanna quickly show you the support legs. Now that's these ones here and to drop them down, all you do is you undo your center catch here and then just fold them down like so. Now, the reason we have the support legs is they're going to support the weight of anything you've got in your pantry. So your fridge full of food, your drawers full of plates and stuff like that, or even if you're leaning on it, it's going to support the weight of that as well. So between that and the locking pin, which I'll show you a little bit later on, your pantry is very secure. All right, now we'll get into the good stuff, the storage features that this pantry has. Now, the first feature you've got is this box here. So that just folds out and over like that. And that's for your bulkier items. So your sauce bottles, your tins of spaghetti, baked beans, things like that. Just those things that are of an awkward height that won't fit in the drawers. Um, you've also got this bit here that will double as extra bench space. So you can put stuff across there when you're prepping. So if you're doing sausages on bread, you can even put all your sauces across there. All right, now you've got these three storage drawers here as well. They're for other foods and things like your plates and stuff like that. Now to open them, all you do is you slide this barrel bolt across like so and just pull your drawer out as normal. Now we have carpeted these ones and the reason for that is it's going to stop things from rattling around as much when you're traveling. Now this is a fold down stainless steel bench. So you can use that for prepping your food. You can use it for having dinner so you can set your camp chairs up and eat there. And to put it away, it just folds up like that. So it just goes away and then the over center catches lock it back in place. Speaking of locking things in place, you've also got this little latch here just behind your pantry. Now what that does is it actually locks your pantry in place. So if someone was to lean on your pantry, it won't slide back in, or if you're parked on a bit of a hill, anything like that, it'll stop the pantry from sliding back inside the compartment. All right, so this is your kitchen. Now you can see we have got the support legs for the kitchen as well. So any weight you put on there while you're cooking, stuff like that, you've got the legs there to support that. Now to open up your kitchen, all you do is you slide it out as we've already done and dropped the legs. Then you just open your extended bench space by literally just lifting this and bringing it over like that. Now your extended bench space is perfect for things like prepping and plating. Taking a bit of a closer look at your stove area now, which is actually underneath this bit of stainless steel here. Now this has a bit of a dual purpose. You open it up, undo the latch there and the arms swing out either side like so, and you've got a wind guard to protect your flame. 
All right, so I'm gonna bring you in for a bit of a closer look at the stove. It is all AGA approved, and you can see we've got these foam covers over the burners. It's just a bit of protection for them. Every burner also has its own automatic ignition. Now, the way to ignite it, you just pick the burner that you wanna use, you just push down, you'll hear the click, 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 just like a gas stove at home. Give it a quarter of a turn anti-clockwise, and that will ignite your flame. Now, that is the highest point of the flame, so if you want a low flame, just keep turning anti-clockwise till you get the flame that you want. Same thing if you want to go higher, just turn clockwise until you get to where you want it to go. Now every burner also has a flame safe on it. So what the flame safe does is it protects you if the flame gets blown out for any reason. Once you're done cooking though, just give it a quarter of a turn uh, clockwise and that will turn the flame off. Now you can see it is quite a big stove and the reason we do that is because we want you to be able to cook pretty much anything when you go away camping. Now one of the best things about camping is going fishing, going crabbing, everything like that. So we put the big stove in there so that if you do go crabbing and you want to boil those crabs up for dinner, you can put your pot on, you can boil your water nice and easily, put your crabs in and have your delicious seafood dinner. Underneath your stove, you can see you've got a fully lined cutlery drawer. So you can keep that stocked at all times with your knives, forks, spoons, stuff like that. And just over to the left a little bit, you've got another drawer. So you could use that to store your tongs, spatulas, things like that. All right, so this is your sink. So this is where you can wash your dishes and stuff like that. Now, the tap for the sink itself is actually operated off of a pressure pump, which is this button here. So that's gonna switch your pressure pump on. You've also got a light just next to it. That'll shine out over the kitchen so you can see what you're doing when you're cooking dinner and stuff like that. But all you do is you would turn your pump on using that button there and then just lift the nozzle of the tap and the water will start flowing out. Now, once your sink's full, you just push that nozzle back down again. You'll hear the click, that'll turn it off. Alternatively though, if you need to keep the tap out of the way, keep it up and just turn your pump off. The water will stop coming out. You'll be able to wash your dishes. You've also got a drying rack there as well. So you can dry your dishes. You can leave them drip dry overnight or just leave them there while you're washing up. And then down here, you've also got a tea towel rack. So you can see we've got the tea towel on there. So you can hang that up to dry it once you've finished your dishes. Now this is the main annex of your camper trailer. Now this is a standard pole annex and you can see it is quite large. So it actually extends over the kitchen past to the back of the camper there, as well as extends over at the front as well. So if you're cooking and it starts raining or it's quite hot and sunny outside, you're protected under your annex here. Now, as every SUV camper comes with a form of annex, three side walls, draft skirt, floor, everything like that. And all of the poles, both inside the trailer and on your annex are aluminium. So they're light, they're less likely to rust, and they're just easier to carry. Now the main annex can actually be left attached to the camper trailer when you close it. To do that, all you need to do is pull all the poles out, pack them away and then tuck all the canvas inside the door and then close the camper as per usual, like Jeff showed you at the start of the video. Now, when you go to attach the walls for your camper, it's actually super easy and you don't need a ladder to do it. You've actually got these level zips right the way around that you can reach from the ground. So you can attach them from ground level, don't need to climb anything, don't need to struggle with zips or anything like that. It's just a straight edge zip, straight across, and there's also Velcro there for an added bit of support when you zip your walls on. With the annexes, we also put these really cool wear strips. So that's the darker bit of vinyl that you can see on the roof of the annex there. So what that does is that stops the poles from wearing through the canvas. So you're setting up your annex and pulling it down constantly, leaving it up for long periods of time. You don't want the poles to wear through. So by putting these wear strips there, that prevents that from happening. Now, en suites are also a standard on SUV campers. You can see here, it just attaches onto the back of the camper. So you get the en suite, all the poles, and also a floor to go with it. Now you've also got these two zipper points here with the Velcro tabs. This is for attaching your shower head. So you can see it on the top one there. Now, please note that the shower head is a part of the hot water system, which is an extra. So ask your salesperson for the best deal on that. But you can put it up high here. So if you're just having a shower yourself or down the bottom here, if you've got a shower, the kids, or you just want to rinse your feet off. Now you can see you've got a king size inner spring mattress here as well as the LED strip lights over the bed. So you've got two over the bed, you've got two over the couch here as well. 
Now they are controlled by the little dimmer switch, which is the white box you can see at the bottom of the screen. And to turn it up, all you do is go up and you see they can get quite bright. Then back down again, you can actually turn them off from here and then back on again. Now inside the camper, you've got these four internal storage drawers. So that's for your clothes, towels, things like that. So they just open up like that. You can see they are quite deep, so you'll be able to fit a lot of stuff in them. And you've got four exactly the same size as this. Alrighty guys, I wanna show you one of the coolest parts about SUV campers, and that is the reverse cycle air conditioning. Now reverse cycle air conditioning is an option on every single one of the SUV campers, but this is the setup for it on the Grand Mega Plus. Now you can see you've got three aircon vents here, so you've got one back here, and then you've got two and three. Now these hoses are completely adjustable, so you can just pull them out and point them in whatever direction you want them to go. So you can point them at the bed, up under the covers, you can point them at the couch if you're just sitting there relaxing, or if it's a hot day and you've just finished setting up, you can even come in and just point it straight at your face. Like it's that easy. Now the best part about it is it's reverse cycle. So it is starting to get a little bit cooler now. That's fine, switch it on to heater, keep yourself nice and toasty warm. Don't forget to ask your salesperson what the best deal is on the air conditioners because there are some pretty fantastic offers going all the time. Now this is your luxury vinyl club lounge seating that actually converts down to a bed. Uh, the next part of this video is going to show you exactly how that's done, so stay tuned. What we're going to do today is we're going to turn this luxury club lounge into a double bed. Now the way you do that is by using the couch backs here. So all you do is you stand up, grab your couch back, like so, lay it across the middle here, and repeat. So you move your corner piece, grab your back cushion, and lay it in the middle here. And last but not least, you grab this one near the side door here, lay it across the middle, and that's it. That's all it takes, guys. Now you're probably wondering what supports the weight when you're sleeping on this bed, and the answer lies in these cushions themselves. They have a board that runs through the middle of them that supports the weight of anyone that sleeps on it. Now the roofs on SUV campers are quite high. This is to allow the hot air to escape easier. I personally am a little bit over five foot nine and I can only just touch the roof of the camper on my tippy toes. So that just shows you how high the roofs actually are. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions about the SUV Grand Mega or anything else in the SUV range, head to www.suvcampers.com.au or call 1300 788 to find your nearest SUV dealer. Don't forget to ask them about the incredible specials we've got running at the moment, but otherwise I'll see you in the next video.